Well, good evening, Facebook. It is Derek Butts with Assist You to Win, the connecting place for winners. I have my two networks that are in joining us this evening, both the Assist You to Win page as well as my IOU page. For those of you that are jumping on, please stay on. You want to hear the nine principles of a preneur. So tonight we are talking about the nine principles of a preneur. If you went to church today, as you're jumping on, hey, good evening, Rohan and Glatha, as you're jumping on, I want you to put in what church you went to this morning. If you went, if you didn't go to church, hey, we're getting ready to have church right here on Facebook Live. This is IOU, online worship experience. How good and glad I am to be here with you. We got some powerful things we're going to discuss today. So if you went to church, throw it in the comment section below. Just put in your church where you went, uh, uh, maybe your location. Throw it in the comments below. Tonight is going to be powerful. I am excited that you're joining in. I'm going to send you a word. Some of you posted inside of my comments that you want me to give you a word. I'm telling you, I'm inspired and, and good things are going to occur as we discuss the word. So, Glath, I see you went to Jordan Memorial. And for those that don't know, C-O-G-I-C means the church of God in Christ. You can't join in. You got to be born in. I love the church of God in Christ. That's the song. That's the motto. I used to go to Holy Tabernacle Church of God in Christ right here in Fort Worth, Texas with uh, uh, Superintendent Robert L. Sample. So I understand the roots of the church of God in Christ. So if you're jumping in and you went to church, throw your comments in there. Thank you for that. Glad I see the hearts that you just threw up there for us. Michael Brandon, all the way from Wales. How are you doing, sir? I met Michael in Las Vegas uh, this this summer. And thank you for joining in and listening to us as well tonight. I'm letting a few of you jump on before we go through the nine principles of a preneur. You want to catch these tonight because you're going to hear a word that's going to help you be both in your business as well as in your spiritual walk. Tyree, thanks for joining in. Tyree was at the service with us today. We were at Victory Church. Oh my goodness, Pastor Aleem and Tanya Bakari, four-year anniversary. We celebrated their anniversary today. Tyree, you were there and I appreciate you being there. Sonny just jumped on. Hey, Sonny, they love loved your gift. They loved your gift, Sonny. So thank you for making that gift and blessing them with that beautiful gift. Scenes by Sonny. All right. Mo, my wife just jumped on. Wherever she's at, she just jumped on tonight as well. Thank you, honey, for supporting me and going. Don't forget, y'all, we get ready to go through the nine principles of a preneur. Matter of fact, why don't you go in there and invite somebody in? Invite somebody to this broadcast. In two minutes, we're going to kick off the nine principles of a preneur. While we're waiting on that, there's never a good church service without having some announcements. So we're going to give you some announcements tonight. Let me give you some announcements. I believe it's September 29th. If Sonny's on there or my wife, y'all please put it in there. September 29th, we're having a, a party for Sonny and her business. Scenes by Sonny. She's going to be showing you her customizable gifts that she can do. And matter of fact, if you just want to come peek at our house, you can come. We're going to be inviting people out for that evening or for that afternoon uh, together. Then my good friend Tommy Jones, this Tuesday, if you're local and you're in the real estate industry, you need to be at the Arlington Board of Realtors Tuesday at 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Some of the top thought minds of today will be there on this Tuesday. Tommy has assembled in his team some great minds that are going to be sharing on the real estate industry how to take their business to the next level. So there you have it right there. Dr. Henry Batson, how are you doing, sir? Thanks for joining in tonight. Let's see. Let's see. Do I want to tag in somebody? Is somebody okay? Nope. I don't know. All right. Thanks for joining in. Are y'all ready? Let's jump into tonight as we deliver to you the nine principles of a preneur. I'm telling you, if 
if you'll do do me something this evening after we go through them when we end this broadcast the broad the point that's yours i want you to, to text it in there say that one's for me and then i want you to share this tonight all right so let's dive into it matter of fact i'm gonna pray for you because tonight is like a service and i feel a service t- style there's times where i interview people but tonight it's like a service matter of fact i'm gonna ditch my hat but for those of you that have been looking at this hat it is a hat that says he is greater than i if you can see that he is greater than i but i'm gonna ditch my hat and i want to pray and we're gonna jump right in to the word tonight all right so let's pray father i thank you for my facebook family regardless of where they are and who they are you said you're omnipresent which means you're everywhere so we are utilizing technology tonight to speak to your people a word of encouragement of whatever they're in going through or coming out of and i thank you that tonight somebody's going to be encouraged edified and so that they can continue in the fight and they can continue to be victorious so i bless you and honor you for my friends in jesus name amen amen so tonight i'm talking to you about the nine principles of a preneur i want to call it creative concepts i shared about this this morning but i'm going to actually get to talk about it today we delivered this as a preach tile message earlier but i'm going to just talk to you about the creative concept all right the first book of the bible genesis genesis the first chapter first verse it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness covered over the face of the earth and the spirit of god was hovering over the waters verse number three catch me if you can then god said let there be light and there was light there's the scripture we're going to talk about three verses there there's something called the law of first mention in the scripture the law of first mention is when something is introduced in the scripture it is generally how it's carried out throughout the scripture If you want to be somebody that's biblically sound, hermeneutics is the study of theology. And when you have hermeneutics, you want to not take something out of context, but listen to it and see it in the text, in the content of the text. All I'm saying is you can't pull one scripture out and make doctrine out of it. You have to look at the pretext, look at the text, and look at the post text in under in order to understand the context so tonight we're seeing the first verse of the scripture in the beginning god i told you i'm talking about the nine principles of a preneur so let's first define preneur what is a preneur i thank you for those that are jumping in you just got to jump in get in where you fit in here we go what is a preneur you can be an entrepreneur you can be a womanpreneur, a manpreneur, a salespreneur, a Christianpreneur, a Godpreneur. It doesn't matter what you do when you attach the suffix to the word. Preneur simply means one that has the ability to take a risk in order to have a greater reward. One who takes a risk in order to have a greater reward. I'm talking to a group of people tonight that want to live life on a different level. Do you realize if you got went to your cupboard and got the loaf of bread out that there are three levels when you look at the bread? See, the first level is the level called the crumbs. That's the little bitty pieces of the bread that sometimes fall off. It's the crumbs. The crumbs, if you eat from crumbs, you just don't have enough. I like to call that not enough. The next level is the slice of bread. You know, there's times in my life where everybody ate all the bread and they left the ends there and you were hungry. You would take that end and you would make a sandwich. But the slice is just enough. Then if you have an entire loaf of bread, can I tell you the entire loaf of bread is more than enough. Most of us don't eat the entire loaf of bread at one sitting. We, 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 we dine on that over and over and it's, it's more than enough. 
The question, the first question I have for you tonight is what level of life are you living from? Are you living from a crumb mentality? Not enough. Are you experiencing life from a slice mentality? Just enough. You go to work and you make some money and you're just doing enough to get by. Are you experiencing life from a loaf mentality? More than enough. Now, I want to challenge you and tell you this is it takes the same level of faith to believe God for crumbs as it does to believe God for the entire loaf. You can believe God for any level you want. And matter of fact, God wants to take you from level to level. So God being the first entrepreneur steps on the scene and it gives us the first point tonight. The first principle of a preneur, a godly preneur is in Genesis, the first chapter, verse number one. What does it say? In the beginning, God. The foundation formula is number one. The foundation formula is that if you're going to do anything great for God, you have to begin with God. You cannot think that God is going to allow you to do something great if you exclude him from your plans. I heard this quote from my mother-in-law this evening. She said, great people come up with an idea. Good people come up with things. Weak people talk about others. See, we got to get beyond the social media trap of scrolling and stopping on the things that are talking about other people. And we have to get to the place where we're beyond just talking about things. That's good to have things. And can I tell you, God wants to include things, but you need to get to the place where you want to believe God for great things. And the only way to get great things, this is what she told me, is you have to come up with an idea. I'm talking about creative concepts. In the beginning, God, the foundation formula for this comes with understanding that you're going to get a God idea when you get in tune with God. See, good ideas will keep you away from your great idea and your great idea is what's special over your life. So the first entrepreneur that steps on the scene is Jesus. It's God himself. He wants to show us how you can create a wonderful, terrific, marvelous life, a life of abundance and a life of overflow. So let's watch how he does it. Chapter one, in the beginning, God created the word create. You know what that word means? The word create means to bring something out of nothing. Stay with me to bring something out of nothing. It's difference between the difference between create and make is this create is I bring something out of nothing. Make is I take something and I put them together and that's how I make something. God wants to show you some creative concept that you can take something out of nothing and begin to have a great life. In the beginning, God created, watch this, number two is the value of vision. Helen Keller said, what could be worse than being born blind? She was interviewed and they asked her, Helen, we see that you don't have eyesight. They asked her the question, what could be worse than being born blind? Listen to a blind woman's answer. Helen Keller quickly replied and said, to have the ability to see, but have no sight. I'm talking to people that sometimes struggle. We struggle sometimes having the ability to see beyond what is seen. And so Helen said that vision is having the ability to see something that doesn't even exist yet. The Godpreneurs that are out here, your entrepreneurs that are out here, my businesspreneurs that are out here, my mamapreneurs that are out here, my menpreneurs that are out here. The creative concept says it has to start with God. Number two, you need the value of vision. But watch number three. Number three is it needs a permission slip. You know, I remember going on field trips when I was growing up. And when I was growing on field trips, when I was growing up, they always made us 
have a permission slip signed before they would release us to the bus. Oh my goodness. You were not allowed to leave the school if you didn't get the permission slip uh, 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 assigned by a parent because they wanted to know that you have approval to go to the next next location. Who am I talking to right now? Have you given the good things of God permission to live in your life? Now, God loves you so much that he's not going to ever force himself on you. You must give him permission to exist in your world. Now, being God, he could have just told you that you're going to go this way. You're going to do this stuff. You're going to love me. You're going to serve me. You're going to do this. But who would really want to be in relationship with somebody that's doing it out of force, not out of choice? God gives you the choice to live life from the crumb mentality to the slice mentality or to the loaf mentality. It's still your choice. I don't know who's choosing what level, but if you're choosing to live God, like live on the top level, won't you hit your like button three times if you're still with me? Go and hit that like button three times. I see you hit the like button three times if you're with me. All right. So in the midst of that, the scripture says in verse number three, it said, let there be light. Let is the word I'm focusing on right now. Let says that it is the permission slip. Hear me. Three things I want you to see as we move to the next level. You must give God permission. You must then have confession and you must have participation if you're going to experience life on another level. Permission, confession and participation. Okay, I just said something. We're on number four right now. Let's, let's, re let's review real quick. Let's review. I want to make sure you get this. Somebody ought to be writing the notes in here for me tonight. Here we go for all of our people that join in late. Number one is the foundation formula. It has to begin with God. Number two is the value of vision. You have to be able to create See something that is not seen and bring it into existence. Number three is you need a permission slip. Let you got to let the things that God wants to do come into your life. You got to allow that. Number four is creative confession. The scripture said he and God said all through chapter one. You hear this and God said, then he said, and it was good. And God said. And then he said it was good. God shows us the power of confession. Now, let me pause parenthetically for a moment and make sure that I don't get labeled as a name it and claim it speaker because I'm not that guy. But I will tell you that creative confession is the catalyst for any great move. When what comes out of your mouth then must get aligned with your behavior, but it starts in your confession. See, if you think about it, confession is your form of communication. Communication speaks the information as well as it sets the expectation. Boy, you talking right. I wish you could say amen aloud so I could hear you. So, so, so communication sets the information and it sets the expectation. The reason why some people are frustrated is because of the communication that people have heard. And so you get frustrated at times because you know that the expectation over your life is greater than your current situation in which you're living in. That's a place of frustration where you know that there's more that he wants to do in you and for you. Matter of fact, through you than you're experiencing right now. How do I get beyond this point? How do I get to the next level? This is where we are. So here's what sometimes people do and why we get stuck is because we keep communicating what we see our situation instead of communicating based on his revelation. Come on now, y'all know what I'm talking about. You pick up the phone and we get so attached to drama that we talk about our drama instead of telling people about the answer. 
We tell people about what the problem is instead of telling people about what the promise is. I don't want to tell people about the, the, the problems of my life. I want to tell people about the promise of my life. I want to tell them about what God says about the problem. I don't want to tell God about just the problem. See, you got to turn off your phone and stop telling everybody about what you're going through because all you're doing is reiterating the thing that you want to leave. So you need to start telling God what it is instead of telling people what it is. We get hooked to drama. Some of us are speaking drama into existence. We talk about drama. We live in drama. We speak drama. We, we experience drama. And so drama is surrounding our life instead of listening to what God has to say about it. Hopefully you're getting it. Hopefully you're getting it. Number one, the foundation formula. Number two, the value of vision. Number three, creative con permission slip. Four, creative confession. Five, here's what separates the, 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 the doers. Here's what se separates failure and success is you must have accountability to action. God doesn't want to just speak just to speak. And, and, and against popular belief, God don't run off at the mouth. See, God's only going to speak to start you He'll speak to shift you and he'll speak to stop you. So if you're idle today, God wants to speak a word to you to say, get to moving, get to stepping. Martin used to always say when he would kick people out of his house, it's time for you to go get to stepping. That's what God wants to speak a word to somebody tonight and tell you that you need to step on. It's time to get the move on. You can't stay here too long. Some of us are idle and we are waiting on God and God saying, man, stop waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. You must participate in this blessing. You're not going to just sit there and man, it's going to keep falling from the sky. I checked just this last week and no meteorologist told me that manna was falling from the sky, which means that you got to go to work and make it happen. God wants to give you a creative concept, but in the midst of it, he wants you to have accountability to action. Who am I talking to? What has God told you? Matter of fact, let's run to Noah. To, let's run to chapter six in, in, in Genesis chapter six, verse number 13. The scripture says, then God said to Noah, verse number 22 says, thus Noah did. Verse 13 said, then God said to Noah. Verse 22, it said, thus Noah did. What am I trying to tell you? God is looking for a reaction when he speaks a word of action over your life. So you have to have accountability to action. I like to tell when I'm on my job, I tell them all the time that we're in a results oriented business. It, it takes effort to get results, but don't just think that we're going to pay you over your effort. You want to make sure that your effort is bringing results in your life. You want to make sure the things that you're doing are the things that God instructed you to do. Matter of fact, if you go in verse number 15 of chapter six, when he told Noah, he told Noah to build an ark. But most of us hear God on what to do, but we don't hear God on how to do it. Come on here. We hear them on what to do, build an ark. But verse 15 says, and this is how you shall make it. God has specific instructions that he wants to tell you to do that it may be different than the person listening to you. It may be different than the person connected on this Facebook Live. It may be different than what you were told to do when you were a child. It may be different than what he told somebody else in that got the same blessing you got. It may be different. Though God healed many people of blindness, there were times that God did it through the spoken word. Sometimes he laid hands on them. Sometimes he spit on the ground and made mud and made somebody put it on their own eyes. The power of the methodology, don't get hooked to the methodology, get hooked to the miracle. Come on here. Boy, you talking right tonight. I know it. I know it. I'm going to say amen for you because I can't hear you. So I'll say it right back to me. All right. First, number six. We're on number six. Number one, the foundation formula. We quickly review for my people that are jumping on. Number two, the value of the vision. Number three, you need a permission slip. Number four, creative confession. Number five, accountability to action. Number six, you need to review the results. 
Verse number one, God said, let there be light and there was light. He went back to what he spoke and he was looking for it. How many of you are looking to see what God said over your life? How many of you are looking to go get it? How many of you are looking to see it? If God told you, what's up, kid? If God told you he was going to do it, you ought to be expecting it and looking for it. Here's where the problem comes. Let me, let me help somebody. You start settling for something that is good when God told you he wanted to give you something that was great. I call that the pacifier syndrome. God does not want you to get tied up to what pacifies you. Instead, he wants you to intensify until you have what he told you he was going to have. Look, why is this message important, Derek? The reason why this message is important, I use Noah as the backdrop. If Noah would not have built the ark, he would have been destroyed. So here's the word I want to tell somebody. You need to catch this right here is this. What you build in this season will carry you in the next season. What Noah built in one season of his life was the very thing that God used to carry him through the next season. Who am I talking to? Somebody had to save a certain amount of money because of the storm that you just went through. Somebody had to invest in certain relationships and it was the relationship you invested in that is now carrying you through this season of your life right here. See, you don't realize that the camel understands that every time it sees water, it drinks water because the camel knows that I live in a desert and I do not know the next time water will be provided for me. Now, the camel doesn't store the water in the humps, as many people have told us. It actually stores fat there. But there's so much water in the reservoirs of the camel that the camel's able to drink from the water that's inside of it in the season when there's no water. What do you got inside of your tank right now that you can lean, lean on and rely on and pull out and tell yourself this right here will help me get through this right here? See, the reason why I'm OK when I go through certain storms is because he's already given me the ingredients of what I need to do in order to get myself out of what I'm in. And those ingredients are not to complain and whine and murmur and bicker. Those ingredients are most of the time is to ask God, what are you teaching me through what I'm going through? What are you trying to work out of me by putting me in situations that I really don't even want to be in? What are you doing for me by placing me and squeezing in tough, tight situations? When I'm in those situations, those are the places where God really gets the glory in my life. So I have to review results. Watch what he did. He didn't build the earth and build the whole world in one day, which tells me that progress is success. Some of us need to start being thankful for the steps that you're making and stop being so hard on yourself for, for you not being there right now. I, I get tired of hearing people say, I'm in the wrong place. You are in the right place. You are where you need to be. You are where he wants you to be. And you just have to stay on the road. You don't go get on an airplane and because you're somewhere between Dallas and Las Vegas and you get tired of being on the plane that you tell the plane to let me out. You stay on the plane. You weather the storm. You go through the turbulence. You have to fight through this feeling in order to get to the destination that he's designed and desires for you to be. Let's move on. Number seven, you got to apply the right type of pressure. Yeah, yeah. Some of us, we, we, we got a generation of people that are growing up that are too weak. We, we, we got this millennial group. If we're not careful, we will not pass on to them the work ethic. We won't pass on to them the principles of success. We won't pass on to them the, the, the grit and the grind and how to make it through tough times and we'll make it too easy. We are not in a microwavable society. We are in a creative society. We are in a society that's looking at problems and figuring out how can we solve them quicker, faster, better, stronger. We're looking at people that are coming up with new, in innovative, creative ways to do things that we have never seen done before. That's the society we're in right now. So we have to be careful, though, that we do not teach 
uh, uh, that it's just going to be that easy. We have to teach the process. If you want to get there, you got to live by principles because they're transferable truths that work whoever you're working them. I got people in Houston. I got people in Kentucky. I got people in Chicago. I got people on the West Coast. It's the same principle and it will work if you work it. Number seven, apply the right pressure. Number eight, trust time. Trust time. Just trust time. Yeah. You can cook your food in the microwave or the crock pot. You got to choose which one you want. Now, I'm going to tell you, quick food comes from the microwave, but quality food comes from the crock pot. Yeah, tonight I was able to eat one of my favorite meals. It was it was it was that macaroni and cheese with some potatoes on the side, green beans. Hopefully you had dinner because I'm about to tell you something. You're going to be real. You're going to be real hungry with some roast sitting in there. That roast was in the crock pot while we were at church. It was just simmering and it was just cooking for a long period of time. And that's why it was so tender and it was able to pull right off and it wasn't tough. And it was just it was it was that way. Why? Because it came from the crock pot. It took time. It took time. It took time. Relax. Breathe. It's OK. You're going to get to where you want to go. But you need to enjoy this season. Learn how to be content where you are with what you have. You learn how to, 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 to be OK with, 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 with where you are right now. It's just the whole, it's the whole, it's the whole factor of time. Let time go. Let time take its place. Oh, but good God almighty, we get to number nine. We, we here now. We, we got to close. We're on our way out of here. Number nine is welcome home. Welcome home is is when you arrive at where he told you you were going to be. Isn't this good stuff that the creative concept of God is that he gives you something in one season and he lets you continue on life. Yes. And he lets you move throughout life. And when you when you when you get to home after going through something, watch this. The people that get to their promise after going through the process, you don't have to beg them to praise. You don't have to beg them to thank God. You don't have to beg them to worship. You don't have to beg them to give. You don't have to beg them to do anything. You know why? Because they understand what I've been through. Oh my goodness. If you just look back over your life and think about what you've been through right now, where you are is better than where you've been and where you're headed is going to be greater than where you are. So keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. So I want to close this 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 Facebook live tonight with this simple word. I use Noah and there was something that happened in Noah's life that he when he built the ark. The scripture says that when the ark, when the door of the ark closed, you better catch this. When the door of the ark closed. The scripture says that the door was not going to be able to be able to open anymore because the ark closed. There are doors that some of you are getting ready to walk through that if you have to do too much, it's the wrong door. Let me tell you the door you need to look for right now. On the way to church, we stopped off at CVS this morning. I walked into CVS. And when I was walking, the door was closed. Catch this. As I got closer to the door, the door opened. There was a sensor that said, you are now close enough to the door. And I recognize that you're there. And now I'm going to open up so you can walk through. Oh, my goodness. The word that I have for somebody is, if you will keep walking in the direction that God told you to walk, there is a door that's going to open up. The door that opens up, that's your door. You got to walk through that door because it opened up. And when you walk through the door, watch what happens. As you walk into the door, what happens? The door closes. But you, it opens. You got to walk in. Then the door closes. I'm telling you right now, there's an open door mentality. There's an open door blessing that's coming to somebody. Somebody needs a promotion on your job. You just need to what? Fill it out. Fill out the application. If the door opens, you're closer to it. It's your door. If the door doesn't open, look for something else.
somebody's in something right now that you have to walk in the way God told you to walk. If it opens, that's your door. But if it doesn't open, keep to walk, keep on walking. That's your word tonight. Nine principles of a preneur developing into the creative concept. So here's my last thing tonight for you is simply this. If you're going to hear God to tell you what to do, stay long enough so he can tell you how to do it. If you will, if you were blessed by tonight, if you were blessed by this word tonight, I ask you to do me two things tonight. The first thing is, is all on you. And the first thing is for you to take this word and, and I got to say it this way. I don't, there's not another way for me to say it. And that's for you to go out there and just do it. That's the word for you. If you got to take the word that God said and just go out there and just do it right now. Go do, go experience, go do exactly what God told you to do. Go do it. And the second word is this. Go tell somebody, go encourage somebody. People are going through, people are facing some struggles, people are facing things that are hard and, 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 and they're hurting. And my word to you tonight is this, first be an example, then turn around and be a blessing. Share this tonight, get it out there. If you're not following the IOU page, please go follow the IOU page. Please go follow Assist You To Win page. I'm here for you because I wanna see you win assist you to win the connecting place for winners as I always am no matter your age or stage race or place whatever you do hey go win have a wonderful week